The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. hey, 864. Yeah. yeah, the F A N A T T I C C. The fanatic, where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what I Welcome into the fanatic sports channel for sports fans by sports fan. It's your boy, Coach I, and you know I got the stat guy with me. What's up, stat guy? What's good tonight, Coach? How we doing? Hey, man, in here for another college football preview, man. We're talking today about the Kentucky Wildcats versus the Tennessee Volunteers, man. So, hey, it's another big-time SEC matchup. I know the Kentucky uh, has looked like, you know, almost like people have left them for dead type deal, but Kentucky only has, what, two losses in the SEC, right? Two losses, one of which coming at the end of my game, Cox, you know. That's right, that's right, that's right. And then they lost to uh, Ole Miss. So this is a game they absolutely need, you know what I'm saying? They need to beat Tennessee, and they also need – they would need Tennessee to lose another one. So um, what you think? What's your, what's your initial thoughts on the game? And I – you know, it's. I think it's going to be a – I think it's going to be a good game. Um I definitely think this will be the def the best defense Tennessee has seen so far this year, um, and probably the second best defense they play all year behind Georgia when they play them. Um, we'll see can they can their potent offense continue to do what they've done. Um, I mean that's going to be the storyline is Kentucky's defense trying to slow down this Tennessee offense. But man, you you look at the history of these two teams going head to head. Tennessee eight and two in the last ten games. Um, they Kentucky's only beat them three times in the last two decades. Um, the games in Knoxville, Kentucky did win there the last time they played in Knoxville, but they've only won there twice since 1984. Um, so a mm. lot going against Kentucky when you talk about that kind of stuff in the head to head. Yeah, I mean. You said it all for the rivalry. These two teams actually do not like each other. I just learned that like three years ago. Uh, I had a you know a former uh, player play uh, you know up there, and he's just like, we just not like Tennessee. I'm like, I don't know if that's because he's getting beat a lot or what, but that's that man. Just a quick recap of, of week eight, man. Kentucky was off, so they had a bye week to prepare to get kind of healthy. Tennessee. They didn't have a bye week, but it was all the same. I mean, they hung up a 50-point, 50-spot uh, on uh, UT Martin in the first half and then just let off the brakes and rested some people. So they're coming in, uh, I, would, I wouldn't I would say as rested, but kind of rested as Kentucky, man. Let's just go ahead and get into the actual game itself. We'll start with talking about the Kentucky offense versus the Tennessee defense. Kentucky is... From all accounts, uh, less Kentucky fans, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, probably the healthiest they've been all season. You know, Will Levis back, uh, Rodriguez, hopefully uh, Barry and Brown, uh, T Robinson, all of these guys are back, man. So give us – you got some numbers on this Kentucky offense? Yes, I mean, you're talking about a team they, – they only average 26 points a game. Like I said, they, they live by their defense. Um the, the stats that I think if you would have told me this is how their offense would have looked before the year, I'd have been shocked, is they're only averaging 113 yards on the ground and then they're throwing for 260. I really yeah. thought here that was going to be a lot more balanced. Obviously, Rodriguez um, being out for the first couple games, I think dictated that. Um, they were way more pass heavy with him out. But now he's back, um, and I fully expect them – to use him like a workhorse to try to keep Tennessee's offense off the field. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, Tennessee, we we watched uh, Tennessee's offense explode against Alabama, but we also in turn <laughs> watched their secondary get torched as well. Um, Tennessee has a decent front. I think they're getting – I think they're getting better incrementally at stopping a run. Uh, this is the, the wrong team to go against uh, when you you know you're not great at it. I think if I had to say one part of their defense was the better part, it is the rush defense. Their secondary. I don't know if they could check me right now, um, but Jimmy, I think Kentucky. Go ahead. Hey, to to add on to that, man. They're, yeah, they're giving up 324 through the air, but that Tennessee defense is only giving up 90 yards on the ground. 
Um, and a lot of that may contribute to how good their offense is and people feel like they have to get in a shot them. Um, obviously, the secondary is definitely a weak link, and so people take advantage of that. But I think their ability to score as quick as they do and as often as they do forces people out of their own game plans to get away from the run and kind of air it out and try to go touchdown for touchdown with them. Yep, that's exactly what I think it is. It's just like basketball, man. Like once you put up a whole bunch of points, everybody starts trying to shoot threes when they not a three point shooting team. And that's sometimes your best defense is your offense. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of that potent Tennessee offense, Tennessee's offense versus Kentucky's defense. Tennessee offense has been putting up massive numbers no matter who they played. Even in tight games, they still put up 30 plus, you know, or, or, or more. You got uh, Cedric Tillman went down against Troy and they hadn't missed a beat because South Carolina native Jalen Hyatt putting up numbers. And I know everybody, like I seen some people on Twitter was like, oh, well, five touchdowns. Now he's the Blitnikoff winner. Y'all crazy. Like, no, five touchdowns, uh, you know, just cemented what he's already been doing going into that Alabama game. He already had five touchdowns. So after the Alabama game, he had 10 touchdowns. He doubled it in one game. So it's not like he wasn't doing anything when Cedric Tillman was there, but that dude's been on fire. I mean, Brew McCoy has had 200 yard games uh, against Florida and LSU back to back. So they got wide receivers for days. I mean, you talk about just this last game. I mean, it was a game that they put it away early and then rested starters, but you look in the first half, almost another 200-yard game. I think he had, like, 174 um, with another two touchdowns. I mean, he's having some video game numbers right now. And speaking of video game numbers, you're talking about an offense that's averaging a 50-burger, over 200 yards on the ground, another um, 368 through the air. Um, you're talking about an offense that's putting up 571 yards through the ground. That's like breaking out the old NCAA 14 putting it on um, freshman mode and just having a field day with your friends on a Friday night. And that's what <laughs> that's what they're doing against um, SEC competition, which is just crazy right now. Hey, I will say this, though. Hey, listen, Kentucky's coming off a of bye week. But before that bye week, uh, they played Mississippi State. And it's a different style of passing attack. Tennessee stays balanced with their play calling, even though their passing yards outweigh their uh, rushing yards. But Mississippi State really doesn't care that much about rushing. But uh, as far as passing is concerned, Will Rogers was leading the nation in passing going into uh, that Kentucky game. And Kentucky held him with 200 yards past it, 203 to be exact, yards passing. And, and like, um, I want to say like a 46 QBR or something like that. And now he's third in the nation in passing. So it's not like Kentucky doesn't know how to stop the pass. It's just, are they deep enough to, to handle Tennessee's up tempo is because like I said, it's a different style of offense. You know what I mean? It's the, it's the no hurry, but I mean, just the raw numbers, you're looking at 117 yards on the ground. They give up, they only give up 178 through the air, less than 200 yards a game in passing that they give up. Um, and they're only giving up 16 points a game. Um, that defense can definitely be stifling. Um, you look at the the big question mark, though, is going to come to the actually the other side of the ball, and it's what cost them the Ole Miss and South Carolina game, and that was turnovers. Um, yep. Turn the red zone, um, taking points away against Ole Miss, and then obviously the turnovers against South Carolina leading to points um, immediately. And it's like their their defense can play – but their offense can't go and give Tennessee free points because Tennessee can score on their own. They don't need help from Kentucky's offense giving them up something. Yeah, and like we mentioned with Tennessee's offense being probably its best defense, Kentucky kind of – like Kentucky has a good defense, but Kentucky numbers – uh, kind of let me know that their offense actually helps their defense. They play complimentary football. Like a lot of that is because Kentucky's not a hit you quick type of offense that's going to score in 10 seconds, five, uh, you know, three to five plays. Kentucky's going to put together drives, eat up clock, keep your offense off of the field. Can they do that Saturday against Tennessee? Like say, we mentioned that Tennessee's secondary isn't that good, but that, I mean, Will Levis is a great passer, but they're, they're balanced. So if they're running the ball, they're eating up clock. You know they could they if they get the ball first, you know, and they're actually being productive. Tennessee may only get the ball once, you know, before time like one one possession in the first quarter, and then like you know get the ball at the end of the first quarter going into the second. That's kind of how I see Kentucky having to attack 
uh, Tennessee. But with that said, man, let's get into those predictions. Give me the the spread on this game and the over under. So the over under is going to be sixty three and a half, um, which mm. I think is extremely high considering Kentucky's defense. Um, they're putting a lot of weight on this turning into some sort of a shootout. Um, and then the spread is 12 and a half, which really isn't. I mean, you think, you know, Tennessee being the home team, we say it all the time, give them three points. But a 12 and a half point spread is really, I think, uh, kind of an applaud to Kentucky and what they feel like they can do to keep this close. Um, that's, my- cr- that's crazy. So you said the over under is 63 and the spread is 12 and a half? You really, they really do. Like, I told you, dog, Vegas be knowing stuff. I don't know how they know, but they be knowing. Like, you couldn't tell me coming into this game the way Tennessee's offenses looked and the way, you know, sporadically Kentucky's looked. I know they've had, uh, you know, injuries, but everybody's got to deal with whatever they got to deal with. To say they're only a 12 point, you know, at home at seven o'clock at night, that's crazy. Right. Um, so my, my X factor for this game is going to happen at probably about 702, 703. Um, and it's the coin toss. Kentucky needs to go out, win the coin toss. And, you know, it's rare, especially for a Kentucky team that relies on their defense. They need to take the ball. They need to go out, put together like a 14-play, eight-and-a-half-minute drive, go up seven, and take all the air out of Neyland Stadium. I'm telling you right now, whether Kentucky wins the toss or loses the toss, if that Tennessee offense comes out first, and scores in three or four plays, which they very are capable of doing. We haven't even brought up Hooker. I mean, Hayden Hooker's having a Heisman campaign type season with the video game stats he's putting up. Tennessee's offense comes out first and scores quick, and Kentucky could find themselves on the ropes, and this game could get ugly. Who are you taking That's all. That's always crazy, man. They take the ball first. I, I get it. Uh, you know, Shane Beamer did that against uh, Georgia, trying to get that momentum. But then if it doesn't work out, you pretty much leave the better offense to get the ball back to back at the end of the half and at the beginning of the second half. That's the only thing about that, man. I think Mark Stoops, if he wins the toss, he's going defense first. He's like Kirby. He's like, look, you got to show me, dog. You, you've done it against everybody else. You got to show me. Now, they did put up they put up points against Kentucky last year. You know what I'm saying? Kentucky won the game, but uh, <laughs> they put up points. You know what I'm saying? So, I think uh, I think Stoops is a defensive guy. He wins the toss. I'm not disagreeing with the strategy. I'm just saying I don't know if uh, I don't know if I do this. That's that's a tough one. But I think the key is going to be if they can run the ball like they want to run the ball. Like you said, their their numbers this year partly because Chris Rodriguez has been out. But he's healthy now, and I want to know if they can move the ball, not just between the 20s, but, you know, in the red zone as well, and if they can put together drives. If they can win the time of possession. I know Tennessee doesn't need a lot of time to score, but the more time Kentucky has the ball, the less time Tennessee's got it. And that's all I'm saying. It's not a. That's why I'm so shocked. It's like 63 is the over-under with a 12-point point spread. Like, whoa, bro. Like, I don't know if last year – Maybe different. I just haven't seen it out of Kentucky's offense that they want that kind of shootout. You know what I'm saying? So it's a home game, night game in the SEC. I'm, I'm taking Tennessee. And it's it's hard to imagine anybody holding Tennessee under 35 uh, at this point in, in, in the season. Uh, at least up, to, up until now. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm going to give Tennessee – I think this game, if if it goes well for Kentucky, can look a lot like the pit game. Could. I'm not saying it will, but it could. That's the style of football they play. I'm going Tennessee 38. 38-28. That's what I'm barely missing out on. I think Kentucky can cover the spread. 38-28 to 28 is what I'm giving it. What you going with? Are you you covering the spread. I ain't taking the under. Um I kind of went back and forth on this, but you know what? 38-28 is 52, is, is, is 66, Jeff. Math is hard. You're taking the over. Um, I was a math major here, baby. UGA education. Let's go. So, um, got that good Georgia education. But, no, so Mark Stoops is going to win the coin toss. Mark Stoops is going to put his offense out on the field first. Rodriguez is going to run the ball down Tennessee's throat. 
I'm going to do it. Kentucky 28, Tennessee 24 with the upset. Let the madness in the SEC begin as my Gamecocks make their way back to number two spot. But Kentucky you fans, know. Kentucky fans, I got you. Y'all are 100%. Y'all are a dang good football club. And I think this bye week is all y'all needed to figure things out. Game plan for Tennessee. Mark Stoops is an amazing coach. Um, Thanks. Y'all did against Mike Leach. And I think y'all are going to lock up this Tennessee offense and expose them and some of their weaknesses. So give mm. me 24 with the upset in Knox Vegas. There it is. Uh, stat guy calling his shot like Bay Roof. Uh, I definitely think Kentucky, you know, has the acumen, the mental, the mental fortitude to to do that. Now holding them to twenty four, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I, cause I, I don't, I'm assuming the Tennessee players are not like their fans. Their fans have been focused on Georgia since the clock hit double zero uh, against Bama, and I, and I said, hey man, Georgia still has Florida, and Tennessee still has Kentucky. I think this will be a decent game. But I just think that offense would be too much. Tennessee fans, uh, Kentucky fans, get in the comments, man. Let us know what you think. Give us a score prediction. And if you sided with the stat guy on the upset pick of the week, there you have it for the stat guy, Coach I, fan at Southeast from state to state. What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?